Hey there, gang. Tomato heads, Mrs. Tomato Head here, Lauren. And I'm coming to you today with a video I've been wanting to do for a while. Full disclosure, my son, Jake, who's filming, he and I filmed this yesterday. And we were using a new app. I got this stabilizer thing that he's using. And the app funked out on us and it was not recorded. We are broken hearted. So we're re recording this today. It is February 29th, 2024, and I'm going to bring you seeds, Seed Starting 101 and how I start my seeds. Um, I have this tried and true process of doing it in these solo cups. It's going to change a little bit this year, not the process, but what I'm using, and I'll, I'll share in a minute. But the reason why, um, first of all, I wanted to come to you with Seed Starting. Many of you down south have already started your seeds. For me, I live in zone 6B. Did you know that, Jake, that we're in 6B? I do now. You do now. Um, last year, I started seeds March 6th, Mr. Tomato Head and I. And it's just too early. And it's, it's so difficult if you're a tomato head like me. You want to get started. You're ready for spring. You're ready for summer. You're ready to bite into that juicy tomato. And so we want to start. And starting seeds is fun. It's fun. It's awesome tracking the progress. As you can see, I've started some already, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, but in general, March 6 was too early. So we're going to push it off a week. So we're going to start March, mid-March. And then from there, I thought we could stagger. So we'll do it in sections. So we'll do, sec we'll do clumps of seed starts for a couple weeks, maybe three, maybe even four weeks. That way they're not all getting humongous at the same time. If you watch my video from last year, I show not my, I did, I filmed a video on seed starting, but it was really from like the up potting um, on. Today I wanna show you from start to finish or as much as I can. Um, so let me explain a little bit about what's going to change. So. I use these red solo cups. I've used them for years. I like them because they're tall. And the way I start seeds is I use, I don't use a seed starting mix because I start my seeds in this and I continue growing them in this. If you're using a smaller, like a six cell tray or something like that, that's smaller, um, you can use a sterile seed starting mix um, because it's not going to be in there very long. But once tomatoes start growing, they need nutrition. I love, I'm an evangelist for this Fox Farm Ocean Forest soil. Fox Farm, give me a call. We can work out an endorsement deal. It's not cheap, but it is so worth it. I call it crack for tomatoes because tomatoes love this soil. So I start my seeds right in the cup and I start them down halfway. So this is one I just started yesterday, which is why you're not seeing anything. I fill the soil halfway in the cup. And then I continually, because tomatoes grow roots along the stem, I continually, here's one that was started back. This is one of Bill Yoder's varieties from his new Depeche Mode series called Suffer Well. Um, as the tomato grows, I will continually add soil up to the top. And that makes for incredibly healthy root system until you're ready to up pot. Um, here's what's changing this year. So the solo cups for a 10 by 20 tray, which is industry standard um, for seed starts, this is a 10 by 20 tray. Um, shoving solo cups in here, I could fit 15 is pushing it mainly 14, especially if you're going to put a humidity dome on when you're starting the seeds, which I do. So it's tight and they're wobbly and they fall all over the place. If you're bringing in and out to harden off your seedlings, it's a pain. If the wind blows, you know, you're all over. So last year I found these, um, you may have seen these at big box stores for carrying plants and stuff, these um, 15 spot cup trays, which makes them very sturdy, very sturdy. Um, you can bring this out when won't blow it over. But the problem is they don't fit in a 10 by 20 tray. Does not work. So 
for bottom watering, which is what I do, it does not work. I did find, and I shared this in my unboxing, I did an unboxing video last week for um, Bounty Hunter Seeds. I found these larger trays from Greenhouse Megastore, but they fit in perfectly for bottom watering. They're nice and sturdy. I thought I had found the solution to my problems. But only on my shelving unit in the other room, which I'll show you in a minute, I can only fit two of these across. So I can still get 15 planted, but only two of these trays. So I'm losing out where I can normally fit three of the 10 by 20 trays. So that was a bit of a bummer. Enter a new product from Bootstrap Farmer, which is a company that I love. I use their windstrip trays here for like growing lettuce, starting lettuce seeds. Um, these are their two and a half inch pots which is great for starting. I start my micro dwarf tomatoes in here and kale and things like that. And then I, there are these five inch pots, which um, I had, and these are great for up potting micro dwarfs. But a member of my group, Tomato Lovers Collective and Swap, uh, told me about Bootstrap Farmers' new 3.3 inch pots. Boom! Fantastic. I wasn't sure though if they would be able to do for me what the Solo Cup does. As you can see, they're a little bit shorter. It's nominal. But I did an experiment the other day and I weighed the soil volume in each of these. They were exactly the same. Both hold 6.5 ounces of soil. Problem solved. And if you get, so I bought a bunch of these, surprise, surprise. They, uh, they offer these inserts here. So you can actually hold, and the inserts are optional, but I like how sturdy it makes it. This is 18 plants per 10 by 20 tray, 18. So that's like four more per tray, and I can fit the three trays on each shelf. So. This is my new thing. I'm going to be able to do what the Solo Cup did, um, have more plants. It's a win-win. Plus, Bootstrap Farmer products are made in the United States, and they're so, so sturdy and pretty colors. So I'm showing you Solo Cups here, but I'm from here on out, I am planting all of my seedlings in these Bootstrap Farmer pots. But if you don't have the Bootstrap Farmer pots, Solo cups work just fine. You want something deep. So let's just go ahead and get started. You want to start with, I'll do a green one. You want to start with moist soil. So over here, is like I poured some Fox Farm in, and you start with, you know, not wet, definitely not wet, but moist, moist. And then you fill it up halfway. That's it. Um, Fox Farm Ocean Forest Soil has all sorts of good things in it. Bat guano, um, worm castings, kelp meal, all sorts of good stuff. So you're starting the seeds in here. It doesn't burn any of the plants or anything like that. And it will allow for nutrition as your plants grow. So halfway. That's all you want is halfway to start. And then you've got your seeds. I am doing... These are mostly dwarfs that I had started because they don't grow awfully big. This one is one of mine. This is my tomato, Bananas Noir. Um, me and Mr. Tomato Head, that is our, our own special tomato. If you're in TLC, many of you have those seeds. Um, some of you grew it last year. A bunch of you are growing it this year. So I start, I plant two seeds per cup or pot. Um, you know, you can do just one if you want to conserve seeds. I do two just in case one doesn't sprout. Here's two, two little tomato seeds. My issue is when they both sprout, which most of the time they do, I can't bring myself to discard any. So I will take the extra and I will give it away to friends. The extras I'm going to put in the solo cups because I'm not giving away these bootstrap farmer cups to anybody. All right, so. Let's put this one seed down here for a minute. So 
I just use tweezers and I stick it in just a little bit. You don't want to press down too hard. You want the soil to be a little fluffy, maybe a quarter of an inch max. I usually do about an eighth inch. And then I just press it down a little bit. Um, I always make sure, in fact, normally I label first because it's so, when you're planting a lot of tomato plants, it's so easy to get them mixed up. I would be made crazy if I didn't know what a variety is. So this is a, um, these seeds came from my, my friend Kim Lund at Right Off the Farm Heirloom Seeds. These are dwarf purple heartthrob. She said this tomato made her weep last year. It was so good. So that's all I need to hear. Jake looks impressed too. Dwarf purple heartthrob. And I know Bill Yoder worked on this also, and he tweaked it, um, stabilized it even further, and created purple rain dwarf, which I have started right here. So I'm growing both of them. All right, dwarf purple heartthrob, and then the date. And it's February 29th. I like these tall labels personally. You can use whatever you want. I've used the short little ones and they often get lost in the soil and make me crazy. So label, and then you've already got your moist soil, but I love this, this sprayer. You wanna dampen it a little bit. Damp, damp, damp. Needs a little, little pressure here. Just give it a good, that's probably about good because the soil's already moist. And then put it back in my tray. And then you want to put it on a heat mat because you will get um, faster germination and more likely to germinate when the seeds are on heat. So follow me into my grow room. This is, these are the shelves I was talking about. So these, these fit three across a 10 by 20 tray. So you want to, um, you also want to put a humidity dome on it. If you don't have a humidity dome, some people use saran wrap. Um, but you want to keep the environment, oh, I should have done this on the ground. Let's do this on the ground. You want to keep the environment moist and warm for the seeds to germinate. Humidity dome on and then on the heat mat. Underneath lights, under grow lights. Grow lights don't have to be super expensive. You can get a shop light and purchase a grow light LED bulb for like one of those clip on shop lights. Um, you do want the light and, and light isn't necessary at this point, to be honest with you. I, I keep it on, but they say that you really don't need the lights on until they germinate but heat really is necessary. I like, um, there's a million heat mats out on, on the market. I like Vivo Sun happens, I feel like they're a good quality, but they're all very similar. Um, you want the lights on 18 hours on, six hours off. So what I do is I keep it on all day. When I wake up in the morning, I turn the lights on. And then um, when I go to bed, I turn the lights off. Once they germinate and it can really vary certain varieties, like my banana noir seems to germinate in three days. Way to go, bananas! But some of them honestly can take a few weeks and it's frustrating because you, you think there's something wrong. I often, over the years, even after 30 years of planting tomatoes, you know, if it doesn't germinate in a week, I'm like, I have to put more seeds in and I'll put more seeds in and then I'll end up with like seven of a variety. So it really does depend. It also depends on how old your seeds are you know, the source, how they saved it. Um, but some varieties just take longer. The smaller, the smaller seed varieties, like my favorite and Jake's favorite coyote, cherry, can take 14 days to germinate. The smaller seeds tend to, they're more of, have wild tomato in them and they take a long time to germinate. So lights on 18, off for six, heat mat always on until they germinate. Um, once they germinate, humidity dome can come off. Oh, and you, you want to continue spraying these to keep it damp 
I, I say every day, every day, just keep it nice and damp. It starts to look dry. You don't need to bottom water at this point because the seeds are close to the surface. Um, but give it a good spray, keep it damp, but don't soak them. You don't want them soaking wet because that is a recipe for failure, or disease, and all kinds of things. So let's go back in here and, and we'll talk more about what happens next. So here I've got some that I've started. I've got a bunch of dwarfs here. I've got, um, here's mine, banana, banana snoir, um, which is a cross between a banana snoir and an unknown cherry that came from our garden many years ago. So these, this was started a um, couple, uh, February 4th. And so you can see it's starting, I, I've already added a little bit of soil, but I wanna add more. So you wanna, I take off these um, beginning seeds, cotyledon seeds. Is that how I pronounce it? Do they do it right? No. Cataledon. Cataledon. I practice that so much. C O T Y L E D O N. Those are the cotyledon. Yeah, you're right. Cotyledon. Take those off and then just continually fill up with soil. Every time I do this, I feel like I'm doing something really good for my plants because they're just going to, you'll be surprised, but they de start developing roots right along the stem. And um, when it goes to planting outdoors, I'll do a video on that too. It's the same thing. You want to bury them deep, which is painful. You've got this great big seedling and then you bury it to like, it's, it looks really small, but trust me, your plants will thrive um because of that so yeah you're going to continually add soil up to the top i've got one here i've got two banana snores in here from two seeds i planted as you can see it's a little bit of a mess because we did just film this yesterday um if two pop up and you want want to what do you do with the second one i mentioned that i i saved them um to give to others some people will just snip when they see a second one, they'll just snip it. But you don't want to keep two in the same cup very long because they will be fighting each other for space and you don't want that. Where's my special little tool? Where's my special spoon? This isn't it, but it'll, this will do. All right, so I will take it and I squish the cup a little to loosen up the soil and then I will actually look oh here's my special tool it's stuck in here so i want to separate these and put them into two separate cups but you want to wait until they're you know maybe around this size you don't want to do it when they're too young because you're bound to um to rip the tomato so i give it a good squish and out they come so now i've got two plants so one i'm going to put actually i'll put them in my new pots, the Bootstrap Farmer 3.3 inch pots. Um, little soil at the bottom. You want to bury it deep again. And then I am a big fan. I, I started using this stuff last year. This is mycorrhizal fungi, which is basically mushrooms. It uh, promotes strong root growth. And I swear I saw a difference last year. Used mushroom compost in my garden and then Putting these on the roots um, leads to very healthy root systems. So I just give it a good sprinkle. It's not necessary. It's not at all. Um, this stuff can get pricey too. You can go ahead and just put regular soil in, but I like to sprinkle a little bit on the roots. And then down in the cup. And then Planting it deep and filling it right up. Right up to the top there, right underneath the first set of leaves. So there's one, and then I'll do that with the other one also. I'm telling you, you have to trust me on this. Your plants are going to be monsters. If you can do this system where you are constantly burying the stem, I shouldn't say constantly, You'll know when it's the right time when um, cotyledon, cotyledon, yes, got it right this time. Take those off. You'll know when it when it's 
Right. I mean, you don't need to be doing it every day, but maybe every couple of days, maybe once a week. And then eventually you're going to get up to the top. Like here. No reason I can't put these right up to the top now. All right. We've got, now we've got two bananas to our plants. Then what to do? Once they get to be, you know, a size like this, I bottom water. Um, top watering can lead to getting a lot of bugs, getting some mold and mildew. Bottom watering in a tray like this is I will fill the tray, oops, fill the tray with water, not to the top because the, it'll overflow, but fill it up to where it's not overflowing. Maybe you can look in here. When you start to see it coming up through the bottom, these have holes in them. Oh, I should mention too, in the solo cups, you want to drill a hole in the bottom, one or two holes, because that will allow you to bottom water and allow for good drainage. That's really important. I should have mentioned that. And I think I didn't mention that in the video that we filmed yesterday. That's long gone, so I'm glad we're refilming today. You um, definitely need drainage. So for bottom watering, again, you want to... Um, I can usually tell when it needs watering by the weight of it, and you'll get to know the weight. Um, you don't want to overwater your seedlings. That's a real big problem that a lot of people, a big mistake that a lot of people make is they uh, overwater. You don't need to. You want the soil damp. That's basically it. So I'll fill it up with water and then I'll let it sit for an hour. Two tops, but usually an hour. And the water will come up and it will get to those roots and keep this damp and it's hard to tell you how much to do it um, once they get bigger it's going to be a lot more often um, but at this stage you know just you can put your finger in the soil feel how damp it is um, but please 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 don't overwater. and then you don't need once it gets to this stage you don't need to be squirting it on the top anymore that's really just for like the early stages and germination so then you're gonna have seedlings that look like this. And eventually, and I don't have an example to show you today, but they are going to outgrow those. This is my biggest one, this Bill Yoder one. This, I still haven't filled it, actually I did fill it up to the top for the show yesterday, but um, I will do it again now. Eventually they're going to outgrow these, but depending on your climate and where you live, you might be able to take these and then go outside and plant. For me, I can't. I can't because when I start these, they just they get they get big. Now dwarfs, I found that some dwarfs can stay in the cups and they're fine until outdoor planting, but my regular indeterminate plants don't. They can't. So then I up pot to these. These are seedling grow bags. Um, they say they're biodegradable and you can plant in them. I do not. I, I tested it. They, if they biodegrade, it must take a very long time because after a year they were very intact. So I, I rip the, they rip off very, very easily. But I'll take this when it gets to be bigger and I'll do another video on this. Once it outgrows the new Bootstrap Farmer Cups, I will put them in here again and do the same thing basically. Plant deep and fill up with soil. And these get to be huge. And I did do a video showing this, which I will link in the show notes um, at the bottom of this. I did do like a what to do after they outgrow grow the cup. I did do a video on this last year, but I will record another one. So I think that's it. What am I missing? Let me just, I'll just go through real simply. So plant halfway, regular, whatever your potting soil of choice is. I like this stuff, but you know, some people like pro mix whatever your potting soil of choice is, but make sure it's not a seed starting mix. If you're going to do this method, you want something with, you know, I like organic with some kind of good fertilizer in it um, because this, the plant's going to stay in here a long time. Plant moist potting soil, plant, you know, quarter to eight inch or eight to quarter inch deep. Spritz, 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 keep it moist in a tray, humidity dome, on a heat mat. Heat mat all the time, humidity dome until, um, heat, heat mat can actually come off after they germinate too. 
um, they can stay on that, but make sure the humidity dome comes off. And um, lights on 18 hours, off for six hours. And then my friends continually add that soil up the stem. I promise you this method will give you monster seedlings. Make sure you're bottom watering. And uh, I think, think that's it. I think that's it. Did I get everything? Yeah, I think I did. So best of luck with your seed starting. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. Join my Facebook group, Tomato Lovers Collective and Swap. We welcome beginners and experts alike. We have vendors, we have breeders in the group. It's a great place, not just to swap, but for information um, to learn all about all things tomatoes. And, um, you know, there's a lot of exciting varieties out there. I'm excited for my varieties this year. And, um, you know, we can all help each other to grow the best tomatoes as possible. So I hope you like my method. I'm excited for my new seed starting trays and, and cups to get those extra cups in. And uh, that's it. Best of luck with seed starting. I will see you next time. Peace and love. Get your gratitude and your tomatoes on. Bye, gang.